Hi everyone and welcome back to the E36 M3 Touring Project. You join me in front of the S50 B32 engine, which we got out a couple episodes ago. And today my plan is to basically just try and strip this down as much as we can, because I am going to be doing a semi rebuild. I don't want to go too far, but I want everything off and I kind of want to replace as many gaskets and O-rings and that kind of thing as I can, just to ensure that it runs well in the future, continues to run as well as it did, um, kind of sensors and stuff like that that might have aged out. Um, I want to say, first of all, thank you to everyone who continues to watch the project and drops comments and that kind of thing. If this is your first time watching, then um, head back and kind of watch the whole project. You'd really appreciate it. I know it's a bit different to the normal stuff we put out and we kind of do see that in the views, but um, I'm really appreciative of everyone who does choose to watch this and is happily following along and commenting and like giving me support. It's been really great. So what I'm going to do, which has kind of become my forte now, old GoPro on the old head and just get on with it because I'm hoping to just get kind of through this. It's not super interesting, just taking stuff apart all the time. So we'll have a time lapse, GoPro, and we'll just see what we can get done and I'll update you if I get stuck or that kind of thing. Okay, I'm thinking first thing is probably going to be the wiring loom. Get that off and then we can start getting into the more metal mechanic -y bits. So let's see where we're beginning. Kind of went up to this block. So. Hmm. Okay, don't open that. That is not somewhere I want to be. Okay, fans off. Thought that'd be quick, simple. Gonna admit, I'm already a little bit stumped, but I'm sure we can just figure it out as we go. Look at this horrible, filthy Vanos. Cannot wait to get Mr. Vanos to come and rebuild this and teach us about Vanos units. That's gonna be good. One reason it's nice to be filming this is because I'm not probably gonna remember. Jesus, look how what bad these are. Ugh. Remember where all this stuff goes so I can look back at these videos. I quite like this design where the plug is holding itself in the bracket though. That's nice. Damn it. Maybe I'm wrong about wiring them first. Maybe it's more airbox. I think there's some connectors I'm just, I don't think I'm gonna really be able to get to. So maybe we get plenum off next or first, I suppose. Okay, that's coming away. Is it gonna be that simple? Okay, that's coming now. Oh, there's another one. Woohoo! Pulling them off. First major step. And yeah, that definitely had to come off for the wiring loom. There was no way. See, this is one reason I wanted to do this, was to change all these hoses. They're all cracked. All going to be giving you little vacuum leaks, that kind of stuff, causing um, rough idle little things like that. Stuff that you might take for granted and you think, oh, it's an old car, but it's a 97. I mean, they figured out a lot of that stuff by then. I'm trying to stick to something that Aston taught me and always put nuts and stuff like that back where they came from so you don't lose them. Which is a very good tip. One that I don't normally do and then I'm left scratching my head. And I ask him for advice and he usually helps. A little bit of oil in there. I don't think there's anything kind of to be worried about. I mean that's just um, um, crankcase breather anyway, I think. I think these are knock detectors. Literally listen, like the word knock 
is because there's a kind of a knocking sound and tuners can have it in their ear um, to literally hear for knock. It's quite interesting. Not to me. Again, see? So that's getting what I believe is like cylinder pressure or something like that. And it's completely split. So that's not measuring anything. Or is that to do with fuel? Hmm, it's measuring, well, it's measuring some sort of vacuum or pressure, but it wasn't because it snapped. literally just this injector rail left and then that whole loom comes off let's consult joey and the internet i'm not convinced that's anything really i think either you know, you won't be able to see this. Either I take the rocker cover off, or maybe just the entire throttle body. I mean, I was going to take the throttle body off anyway. Ooh, they're lovely and dirty. Yeah, I was going to take this off anyway, so maybe we just do that. Okay, those are loose. That's interesting. I wasn't expecting them to be loose. <sighs> Please don't say I've done all of this and I didn't actually have to. Oh my god. <sighs> that just comes off on its own. Right, I don't feel too clever now, because that's come off. <laughs> I can continue getting the fuel rail off. One set of individual throttle bodies. Ho ho. Okay, so that's the engine stripped partially down. It, I do want to go further, but I think I'm going to stop here because um, I had a friend point out that really I should be cleaning all this this up. You can just see how caked in like filthy oil it is. 
Yeah, I should be cleaning all of this up before opening it up too much. So I've put the rocker cover back on. I will tighten that up and you know, that should be okay. Um, before I kind of start taking coolant lines off, um, oil, that kind of thing, and open the engine up too much and taking the Vanos off to just get this outside, degrease it, clean it down and get it just a bit nicer because I've got pretty filthy just taking all this stuff off. Um, and then I can continue to strip it. But I think that's a pretty good place to stop and do a bit of cleaning because it definitely needs it. It looks like, I think, it's probably just, maybe it was leaking, leaking from the rocker cover gasket, but a lot of it's situated around the Vanos, underneath the Vanos. Like it's just caked. It's not a major leak. It looks like it's just weeped for a very long time and slowly just got dirtier and dirtier. And yeah, it does need a good clean. It's kind of around here as well, so maybe that was those split breathers and stuff like that. Yeah, next step, get this block cleaned down. I think I'll feel a lot happier. So that is one stripped S50 B32. It was nice to get it a bit cleaner, kind of things like, that's a lot better than it was. Come around here, unbolt a lot more of the stuff as well. Now that it was a bit cleaner and ready to do so, kind of things like the water pump, I didn't want to get stuff in, or the oil filter and thermostat housing, things like that. Um, take a look at the uh, camshafts. Now that I've got that open, all looks nice in there. Maybe a little bit more golden than you perhaps like. That might indicate um, engine that's got quite hot or the oil services haven't been quite as common possibly, but I don't think it's anything too much to worry about. So that's that. It will be stripped down further. Uh, obviously I'm going to do head gasket, things like that. I am just trying to decide how far to go with it. Got those super sprint manifolds. I haven't taken those off yet because essentially they're effectively sealing up the, um, exhaust side. So that's not a problem, but I do need to just figure out how, just how far I want to do with this. It really comes down to budget and what I think needs to be done v what I would just like to do. I know things like the Vanos are being done. Um, I'm going to replace the cam chains, the guides and the tensioners. Can't see it, but the oil pump, I'm also going to change that out for a new one. 
But I don't know if I get too far in. Head's gonna come off to do the head gasket and I'll do things like the valve stem oil steel seals, um, all the valve clearances, you can see there, those. Don't worry about stuff like that, that's just a little bit of gasket. Um, in there, you've got the shims. You can adjust those to make sure the clearances are correct. Ooh. But I don't know if I'm gonna get down into this bit I don't know if I really want to touch things like the um, crank itself, the kind of the rotational assembly. The sump's going to come off to do the oil pump. And I have done the rod bearings before. I'll probably just maybe take a look at those just to make sure they're all okay kind of thing. It would be a bit foolish of me not to just crack them off and have a quick look, but they can probably just be put back together. They're probably only a thousand miles old. And there we go, that's the S50B32 stripped down as far as I kind of want to get today. It has been a little bit more challenging than I thought it was originally going to be, but I've never stripped an engine before, so I don't think I did too badly. The loom was actually surprisingly harder to get off than I first thought, just figuring out where it went, and I'm sure I'm going to be pretty happy with the fact I filmed a lot of that for when I've got to put this back together. This is as far as I'm going to take the engine on my own. From here on, I am going to have professional help either through Aston, who's probably going to help me with things like the timing chain, oil pump, um, getting the head off, that kind of thing. And then we're going to get um, Mr. Vanos down. He's going to talk us through the Vanos and how that works. That's going to be pretty interesting, I think. The next thing for the project is actually getting the engine and kind of drivetrain out of the touring shell. That's actually already been filmed, so hopefully not as big a weight. Um, next up on this probably will be something like the Vanos because I can get that rebuilt and then um, ready just waiting to go back on. I'll put things like the rocker cover back on now just to keep this as sealed up as I, and as clean as I can. And then from there, I think I need to strip the diff down, but I think that might be the first video where the whole diff process from strip down to rebuild, um, looking at the wave track, that kind of thing. That might be the first video that's all one rather than bits and pieces. I think that might make a bit more sense. But again, point out what I did wrong in the comments. Give me words of encouragement. I could always use them. This is a big project and I'm right in that slump at the moment, you know, still taking stuff apart. Just want to start getting, start getting some nice new bits back on, bring me up and then get onto that way. And yeah, just thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you liked the video, please remember to smash that like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. If you wanna join the conversation, please drop a comment below and we'll try our best to respond to you. If you wanna watch more of this project, you can do so over here. If you want to watch what YouTube thinks you might like from our other content, you can do so over here.